We'll go on sale in 20 minutes. Photo area, so through that door, turn right and then left of the bridge. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Apple and for today we'll be going around Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary and right now we are at the Bloggers Lounge and we're checking out the map. We actually bought a guidebook which looks like this. It's only a dollar and you get details about the place, um, you know, maps and all of that. This is also a good souvenir. So our next schedule will be at 12 o'clock. 12 or 12.30, right? So let's go around. So on the other side, here, free flight raptor show. We are at the general store. Oh, malapit na lang. So let's go. It's over that area. The dingoes and the crocodiles. It's big. It's very soft, babe. Hi. So, we've just finished at that area. There is one resting in the middle of everything. So brang lambot ng fur nila. It almost feels like a velvet cashmere feel. And I thought they were gonna be aggressive, but no. Well, yeah, because kids are allowed to enter here and pet them and feed them. There's an emu. Just hi emu. Hi emu. Here it. Okay. Hey, Kangi. 
Go nearer, babe. You're too far. Oh. Bye. Well, it's the same. <laughs> Kitty pig. Commentary for your bird show today, and I will be joined by Lee and by Tess, and they will be doing the flying of the birds for us today. Now we're going to be showing you guys birds of prey, but even more specifically, we are going to be showing you guys raptors. Now to be a raptor, you need to have three key features. So firstly, you need to have forward-facing eyes with binocular vision for spotting your prey. You need to have a sharp, uh, hooked, and curved beak for tearing at your prey, and you need to have very big, sharp, powerful talons for catching your prey. Now, because of these very sharp, pointy reasons, we do need everyone to remain seated for the duration of the show. So, if no one's uh, found a seat, if you could sit down now for us, that would be absolutely excellent. And we will need everyone to remain seated for the whole show. And now, if you have a camera on a selfie stick, for the same reason, if you can keep that at face level, that would be absolutely amazing. Some of our birds do like to fly quite close, and if you were to stand up or a camera were to pop in their way, um, it could cause them to fly up a tree and be really scared, um, or it could cause a collision and we really need to avoid that at all costs. Really close. Oh. 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 to the face. <laughs> now, what she's doing is showing off for you guys. As I was saying, uh, it's really important to be really slow out there on our road um, for these big beautiful birds that are enjoying quite a large and real. Well, you guys might think he looks really, really big, but in actual fact, he is a male bird and he's a male raptor. Now, in these raptor species, so with all the stuff, oh, check that there's no pelicans around. <laughs> <laughs> and then hopefully, if he's not an Elmo, will eat that one whole. But I think the wind is oh. causing her a bit of strength today. And down the hatch it goes. It is all gone in one. Hello, everybody, bite. welcome to Lone Pie. Thanks, Hunter and welcome to our sheepdog show. Now, my name is Steph, and we have a bit of a treat in store for you all today. Now, what we are gonna do, sorry, Fergie, is we're actually gonna use one of our brand new dogs in a show for one of the first times. Now, Fergie, where are you going? <laughs> all right, bye. <laughs> now, that little clown there, and that's a brand new trick from her, uh, her name is Fergie. Now, Fergie is a five-year-old border collie. Now, we've also got one of our other dogs that's a little bit more experienced over on the log over there. His name is Hunter, and Hunter is our seven-year-old border collie. Now, the reason why Hunter is down here is Fergie's still in the middle of her training, and the last part of the show involves bringing the sheep down and putting them into the yards here in front of you all. So we're going to see how she goes with that, but if she doesn't have it under control, Hunter's going to give us a bit of a helping hand to help her get those sheep in there. Now, border collies are used a lot here in Australia for when it comes to working with now, sheep. And she's going to get in behind those sheep. And what you're seeing right now is the amazing natural herding instinct of these dogs. So that's the way they just continue to move themselves back and forth behind the sheep. And without me having to say too much to her, the sheep should end up right down here with me. So this is what we rely on so heavily when moving our sheep out in our big, large paddocks. It's this amazing, natural herding instinct. Now basically, all we do when training the dogs is we tweak that herding instinct just a little bit. So we'll add some directional commands onto it, a stop onto it, a walk up and things like that as well. So we'll see how she goes when she gets the sheep in nice and close. And we'll see if she's up to showing you her directional commands. is that. She's brought the sheep down here and I'm pretty sure they couldn't get much closer. I reckon she deserves a big round of applause. Well done, Fergie. Now, lie down, Fergie. I'm going to show you her directional command. So I'm going to get her to stop again. I'm going to give her those commands. So lie down, Fergie. What she's just done right now is 
she's just put herself into the balance position. So because I moved down on that side of the sheep, everything in her head is telling her to put herself on that side of the sheep over there. So, Fergie, lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Good girl. So we have her back. Good girl, which will get her to go anti-clockwise around those sheep. Good girl, Fergie. <laughs> stay there. Lie down. Good girl. We have a here. We shall get it to go clockwise around the sheep. Good girl, Fergie. Lie down. Lie down. So with those commands and then a couple of others that we can add into the mix as well, that's how we can then successfully manoeuvre our sheep through the obstacles. Look, the fleece comes from me. So this is fleece. But do you want to know this a bit? So they, these are the process. Oh, we can't really see. Siguro may mga sheep shearing show minsan dito. Oh, Maxi Maxi here. It's now 1.30 and we're gonna have some snacks. Some snacks baby. I got from Coles. It's the Go Ahead Crispy Slices. It has forest fruits inside and nakakabusog siya kahit ganito lang siya kaliit. So I got one more. Let's get back to later. May mga meals ko sila sa loob. Walang no, babe? Most. I'm super oily. I wonder if a Greek and kung kano adami tao dito, right? So we are at the general store. Kuala Forest, yeah. We can go to this part. Who has been to that part? But we bought kangaroo food, so we're going back to the free range feeding area later on. Yeah. We gotta have water. It's super hot. At nakablak ako hindi masadong nagabsorb yung cotton. Ang ganda ng cotton niya. Yeah. It's the I have an I think meet a koala. I want to eat it, We can do that, babe. That's not bad feeling. Hmm. Nice one. Thank you. Thanks. I don't want to swap on it, are we going straight to the kangaroos now again, babe? We're going there again because this time we have kangaroo food. So we are back.
Yeah, this is the wildlife kitchen. Yeah. So they pellets. they actually go and get their food out in the wild. Do they go actively hunt it down and ambush it themselves or they scavenge for it? So they've got, as I said, that really good sense of smell and they can pick up the scent trail of an animal out in the wild. They go find a well-worn animal track and they can hunt down and chase down an animal throughout the night. They're usually getting more smaller, mostly ground-based prey, things like rats, mice, maybe rabbits, different types of ground-dwelling birds, lizards, snakes, pretty much anything that they can get their hands on, they're going to be pretty happy to eat. And in saying that, that's where their scavenging behavior comes into play as well. They're not afraid to go after some scraps left behind by another predator, maybe a bit of roadkill on the side of the road, or things that are just maybe passed on naturally out in the wild. Um, now, when they are scavenging for their food, they can get much bigger. Here at the amphibian and reptile habitat. Wow. Warm up python. It's shedding, babe. Look. It's there. Yeah. Python yung nasarap ng bahay natin? Yeah, it looks like that. So the other day there was the snake in front of our house. And it looked like this one. So let's go up. This is a tree frog. Maybe it's on the tree. Where? You found it? Okay, okay. Come finish Ah, and then. Oh no, that's a leaf. Oh, there, there. <laughs> ah, they were hard to find. Mostly on stone. They look like stones. Right? They're over there. Okay, now on to the next one. That was the tree frog. What's in here, babe? Inland taipan. You know? Snakes. Call it black snake. Baka nasa mga rocks. Can't really find it. What's this? Ah. Where? Oh yeah, they're small. Oh my god. Olive python. There, it's huge. 
kakainin ka niyan. So, we're done with this one. And we're heading out. And I'm oil paper na ako because my face was extremely oily. Uh, let's look at this one, babe. Yung cross something something. Where? Mm, and there's just a turkey. 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 Tara. Mubana? na? Yung isa yun na. Souvenir stuff. So you can buy this, that one. Oh, koalas. Best seller yung mga koala. So cute. And other stuff. Fridge magnets. And boomerangs. You know what I mean? for it we used this pathway it's for bikes and people and one kilometer na lang left na kami bye get the sunset look the sun is so beautiful